your competitors are probably getting more traffic than you. But you know what? That might actually be a good thing because they've invested time and resources into getting all this traffic. And today I'm going to show you guys how you can swoop in, see exactly what they're doing and 10 exit on your own website. I do want to quickly thank Ahrefs for sponsoring this video. In my personal opinion, the best SEO tool in the market. Also guys, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be launching my complete SEO course. This is going to have all of my SEO knowledge plus case studies and a bunch of SEO strategy breakdowns that I'm not going to cover in this channel. So more info on that coming soon, guys. But if you have anything specific that you'd like to see in the course, please leave a comment in the comment section. Now, for us to do a deep dive into competitor analysis, we need a really accurate and reliable SEO tool. And again, as you guys can imagine, I'm going to pick Ahrefs. There's definitely other tools that you can use. SEMrush will also work completely fine for this analysis. So today we're going to pretend that we work at Fiverr, the freelance service marketplace and we want to do some competitor analysis so where do I start? So we first need to understand our competitors and need to understand what the landscape is. So one of the cool things about Ahrefs is that we actually have the ability to see which competitors are ranking for some of our keywords. So one of the ways we can do this is if we click into organic search and we scroll all the way down here, we're going to see our top 10 competitors in the US. The biggest one probably Upwork right here. Another way that we can do this is we click into the competing domains page inside of this site overview, right? Again, we have Upwork, SS billion.com don't really know a lot of these but we definitely recognize upwork and so what i would do at the absolute start of a competitor analysis is i would open up all of these different competitors that ahrefs is telling me that i have plus any other competitors that might not be included here that i know myself right so what i would do there is i just want to know what the landscape looks like who's the biggest competitor how much traffic are they getting i want to understand what's that top level traffic goal that we should be aiming for if we employed our max maximum SEO efforts, right? To keep things simple, I'm just going to pick Upwork as our main competitor today, and we're going to be breaking them down. We do obviously want to just take a quick brief look at the overview. We want to understand how much traffic they're getting. And very importantly, we want to understand this domain rating figure, right? So we're looking at 5.7 million in monthly organic traffic coming in, a bunch of keywords, a bunch of referring domains. These numbers are kind of hard to understand from the overview. Again, if they tell you that a website's ranking for 1 million versus 2 million keywords, it's kind of hard to grasp that, right? But what is easy to grasp is this 91 domain rating metric, right? So that's telling us that this is a very, very strong website and definitely an important player in the space. We're now going to talk about two main things that we need to do to have that complete breakdown of our competitors. So the first one is traffic and content. These go hand in hand. So we're going to talk about them together. And then the second thing is backlinks, which is actually one of my favorite ways of finding backlink opportunities. Now for the traffic, what we want to do is we basically want to understand the overall structure of the website as a first and which parts of the website are generating organic traffic. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off just by taking a look at the top subfolders, right? We want to see what sections of the website are getting that organic traffic. And Upwork's case is is actually a perfect example for this video because we're going to see a very healthy breakdown of a variety of different sections that are getting traffic to this website, right? So what we want to take a look at now is this percentage number right here. That's the total breakdown, the proportion of traffic that this specific section of the website is bringing for Upwork in the United States, right? So we have freelance jobs, that's 30%. We have upwork.com slash hire, that's 22%. We have resources, which is 6%, obviously a little bit less, and services, which is 4%. But still, we have those four main sections that are responsible for the bulk of traffic for Upwork. And so what's actually cool about what Upwork is doing is that they're basically employing all these different sections. And I honestly, I wouldn't have known this unless I did this little competitor analysis. They have all these different sections basically dissecting one main topic in different ways. So here's an example, right? Let's take the example virtual assistant. Now, I've opened up one page in each of these four main sections. And I'm going to show you guys how they target different intents and different variables variations of this keyword in each of these sections, right? So let's start with the freelance jobs, right? So right here, we're looking at freelance jobs slash virtual assistant, right? So now they're targeting the job site of virtual assistant because on Upwork, you can hire a virtual assistant and you can also become a virtual assistant, right? So they're targeting the job section of the virtual assistant keyword with their freelance jobs subsection. Now let's talk about hiring a virtual assistant, right? That's the other side of that keyword virtual assistants, you want to hire someone. Well, they have their hire section and they have a landing page for all of that where you can scroll through 
and find someone to hire. What about the actual service, right? That's also a very important keyword, right? Looking up virtual assistant services. Well, they also have a landing page for that where you can basically scroll through a variety of different categories of virtual assistants and find exactly what you need. And then the final thing that they do is they have this section for resources where they basically target keywords with informational intent and they have long form content. Now, this is where we'd stop and we'd consider what we're doing on our website to see if we're breaking down this topic in the same way that Upwork is, right? That's why these competitor analyses are so powerful. We see exactly what they're doing, what's bringing them traffic and what's working for them. And we try and think how we can apply that to our website. So by taking a look at Upwork's four main subfolders, we've just seen how they break down these massive keywords into different subsections and they fulfill all those different subsections and intents with different types of content. A final thing that I like doing before we talk about backlinks is I just like to check the keywords and the top pages, right? Ideally, we check both, but just for the sake of this video, I'm just going to look at top pages. It is a very similar report. And what I want to do here is I'm just going to click into this and just set a few filters. I'm going to say United States to simplify things. And I'm going to add a filter where we can remove the Upwork keyword. So we don't, so we're not bombarded by just the brand keyword. What we want to do here is we basically just want to scroll through some of the top pages, some of the top keywords as well here. We can see them on the right and just see if we've missed anything from the content that we're creating, right? So we can just scroll down, see if there's anything different. Again, we're looking at a featured snippet here for how to become a virtual assistant. So it's that long form content. And there's actually something that kind of shocked me here that I didn't realize Upwork was creating content for this. But when you think about it and when you see the content now, I'm going to show you guys in a second, it actually makes perfect sense, right? How much does it cost to build a website? Well, there are people on Upwork that build websites and there's plenty of projects of people hiring web developers and web designers building websites on Upwork. So why wouldn't they create a guide on how much does it cost to build a website, right? If we actually check out this content, it's a phenomenal guide of how much it actually costs to build a website. And while they're giving you that value, they're going to be plugging in some of their services or maybe projects that you can get involved with. So here's an example right here, projects related to this article, you can click through and that'll take you directly into Upwork. So very, very well done long form article. And that's why this section is bringing them a significant chunk of traffic. Also guys, just a quick word about long form content before we talk about backlinks, especially for long form content. What we want to do when we're taking a look at our competitors is we basically want to almost audit their content. And this is a lot easier with a landing page. You can quite easily see the different sections and the headings they're using. But for long form content, we want to make sure we analyze absolutely everything, right? So we're going to take a look at the images and their alt tags, internal links, external links. We want to know exactly what anchor text they're using for both, what type of CTAs they're adding, and especially the structure of that long form content, right? Are they getting a lot of featured snippets for their content? Why exactly is that? Again, if you want to watch that featured snippet video, you can check it out right here. But we basically want to understand exactly what's going on in their content. And we do that by just analyzing it from head to toe. So now let's talk about backlinks. And I'm not going to be using Upwork as an example here, just because they have a massive brand that has been around for a while. These guys are getting thousands of backlinks every month completely organically. So what I want to do is I want to take a look at another competitor of one of the sites that I'm building, which is writer.me, right? It's that AI content generation product that I'm working on. And this is one of the main competitors. Now, what we want to do for backlinks is there's a few quick tests that we want to run to have a basic understanding of how these guys are getting backlinks, right? So as you guys might know, I prefer looking at the referring domains report instead of clicking into the backlinks report just because it's a bit more tidy. And at the start, what I want to know is I just want to know who's linking out and why, right? So if we click into the referring domains, the first little test that we're going to do is we're going to check the number of do follow versus the number of no follow backlinks, right? Just as a quick review, do follow backlinks are the ones that are actually going to pass over authority and no follow backlinks will not. And so usually what's going to happen is that most websites are going to have a lot more no follow backlinks than do follow backlinks just because do follow backlinks are hard to get, right? And those are the organic ones that we fight so hard to get, right? So we see that they actually have more do follow than no follow. So this could mean that they're either pushing very hard in link building or that just organically, this is a phenomenal product. And there's a lot of people just casually linking organically to these guys. So now that we know that ratio, what I want to do now is I want to select do follow as a filter. I want to find their most powerful 
domains, right? So which massive websites are linking out to these guys and why? I wanna click in MSN, for example, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna open up this little arrow down here. It's gonna give us a bit more context of that backlink and a little preview of the anchor and the exact backlink, right? So the refrain page is talking about artificial intelligence. It's getting better at writing. Universities should worry about plagiarism. That's actually a phenomenal backlink that these guys are getting. And what we wanna see here, entrepreneur.com. So it looks like these guys have gotten a lot of really good press, a lot of articles talking about them. I do think they're one of the biggest companies in the space. A lot of these links look really natural, right? So in content links directly to the brand. So we know that this is a big brand that is now getting a lot of organic backlinks. Another quick test that I like doing is the best by links page. So what this page is gonna tell us is what are the pages that have generated the most links organically, right? Those will be the most powerful pages that will rank the best. Most of the time, we're gonna see that the homepage is the one with the most referring domains with the highest URL rating. So that's the strength of this specific page. But if we scroll down, we're gonna see, for example, Song Lyrics Generator. This is getting a decent amount of referring domains, a 26 uh, URL rating, that's pretty strong. So we definitely wanna do a deep dive into that page. What are they, are they doing something different that maybe we're not doing? Do we even have this page? How can we recreate the results they're getting on our website, right? This is the question that we need to be asking ourselves all the time while we're going through with this competitor analysis. So we can scroll through this and just see and see if there's anything different that we're not doing. And the final thing that I like doing before I do the full dive into backlinks is I just like to take a look at the anchors, right? The anchor text is the actual text on top of that link. It's giving Google that extra message of why people are linking out to this website, right? We're gonna see some pretty natural anchor text ratio. So a lot of brand, which makes a lot of sense. The actual domain makes a lot of sense. And then we have very small percentages of random anchor text. I'm not even really seeing any heavily optimized anchor text, which is telling me that these guys probably aren't doing any link building very aggressively. If anything, they're just getting a lot of organic and very powerful do follow backlinks. So once I understand those things and I follow through with that checklist, I will then spend some time scavenging the referring domains to see if they're doing something that I'm not, right? And so I actually found a phenomenal example here when I was doing this quick breakdown. They're getting a bunch of links from SEMrush and links from SEMrush are very hard to get. So I was wondering how they did that. And it looks like they now have a SEMrush and writer integration, right? And now what this has done is this is giving me a bunch of ideas of partnerships that I could work on, not only for getting backlinks, but for the business that we're building, right? Are there any digital marketing softwares that we could maybe partner with, just like these guys are doing from those partnerships, we can build relationships and relationships will eventually lead to backlinks, right? So imagine doing this exact process for traffic, for content and for backlinks with a bunch of your competitors, you're going to move your SEO strategy forward very, very quickly. If you wanna see more competitor analysis, you should check out this playlist where I break down really successful SEO strategies from big companies like Canva, Airbnb, Shopify, so on and so forth. Guys, there's going to be a lot more info on this course that I'm making really soon. Thanks for sticking till the end, guys. See you in the next one.